Log on guys, it's your boy Jack, AKA the Balding Reefer, coming at you for today's video, which is the update on the raised sleeper pond slash Japanese garden build. So, let's go. Okay, so it's now like December the 9th, I think it is. Uh, you guys have been asking for a lot of different updates on the Japanese pond build, so I thought we'd get straight into it now. Uh, for those of you who are new, this is something that I've built myself by hand. I'm not a carpenter or anything like that. I work for a tech company in the daytime. Uh, so this is all stuff that I've self-learned and learned stuff watching other YouTube videos and stuff like that. Um, if you are new, it'd be a massive, massive appreciation to me. Uh, I'm nearly at 1,000 subscribers now. I'm going to be doing a big giveaway um, when I get to 1,000 subscribers. If you can swipe up and hit that subscribe button for me, that'd be absolutely amazing. And if you're returning, welcome back, people. Now, let me give you a quick look. So as it stands at the moment, obviously we've got all the fencing up there. Still need to clear up the trees from when we had all the conifers and whatnot quite a few weeks back. Uh, you will notice that all the gravel substrate isn't down as of yet. Uh, obviously I have got some more of the netting round here. I say netting, the underlay just there. I need to put down my friend's son who's going to be coming up uh, to actually move this for me. It's just an absolute killer uh, with the weather. But you will notice the pond has fishing. Now, humongous side note here. None of these in here are my fish. I am actually, I'm actually babysitting these for a friend of mine, uh, Alzi Boy. You guys have seen him donate fish to the fish room in the past previously. Alzi Boy is currently in the process of moving house at the moment. So he is redoing all of his ponds. So I said, obviously, while this was going to be empty over the winter, that he's more than welcome to actually bring his stuff up here. So both of these pumps you see on here at the moment are actually Alzi Boy's pumps. Now... There's 38 fish in here in total. There's uh, either four or six goldfish. Uh, the rest of them are koi, uh, and then there are four sturgeons, which you can see one just there now. There is a rather large chap in here that's about four foot. But if we can see him, I will happily show you guys. But let me start you with the filtration so far. And again, this isn't how my filtration's going, don't worry. This is only a temporary stopgap. But I just wanted to, see, to showcase you guys how simple it is to actually clear your water, etc., etc., when it's all outside, just off basic filters. So this filter here, let me just take the rocks off the top. Alzi boy actually run just this filter on his pond, which came to see where the sleeper join is there from the end. This was 2.4 meter squares. Uh, so there's a lot more water volume going through here. Parameters are all spot on. If you are interested, um, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, and we can actually do a full water test on this and I can show you how to do a water test on the pond. But inside here, all he's got there in the back is the foams. He's got some plastic tube in here. He's got some alpha gog there. And then he's got some of the um, brushes over there in the corner. We are running a 55 watt UV light on here. And then we've also got the pressurized filter over here that's good for up to 20,000 liters. This pond is 25,000 liters. It does have a UV light inside of it, but it's not actually turned on at the moment because we do need to get another bulb for it. But like I say, this here is only actually a temporary setup. My filtration is gonna be going down the side here, back your shower here, and then we're doing the DIY bog filter here, aren't we? Uh, for those of you that have been following along. Fish-wise, like I say, he's got various different coils. He's got a beautiful, beautiful tancho just down there. He's got a shusu. And here, ladies and gentlemen, is the four-foot sturgeon. I don't know whether you can see that because of the uh, reflection of the uh, water. Let me come from another angle. He's just down there in the corner. He's an absolute beast. He will come up uh, in a second. Uh, and obviously with sturgeon guys, don't forget, you do need to be feeding them all year long there's the albino just down there uh, and like i say he's got some amazing shoe shoes he's got some ghosts there's a rather large tension here as well uh, he's got a small baby tancho just down there um another sturgeon just down there by the pumps again i don't know if you guys can see this i'm actually about to invest in an underwater camera that i'm gonna be able to put inside of here that you guys are be able to see he's got some amazing butterfly koi just down there Obviously, the koi purists amongst us obviously tend not to like the butterfly koi. I personally absolutely adore them, even though I would still class myself as a koi purist as well. Lovely Benny down there in the corner as well. Really, really big coloured ghost. Um, he's got his albino ghost, which is there. 
there's the Tancho. There's the Shusu there now, just in front of the Tancho. But yeah, he's got some absolutely amazing colours. Uh, a nice Sankey there. But like I say, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily class this as overstocked. I probably would on these two pumps. But like I say, for the time being, the parameters are all okay. We're on limited winter foods now. These guys are being fed every two to three days. Um, obviously, we're going to have the three meter floating deck going in here. But like I say, with the weather, it's just been absolute pain in the back sides. I just want to answer a few questions that people were concerned about on the last video on about the conifers. Now, in Japan, they do actually use conifer to breed, so it's not harmful to the water or anything like that. But as you can see there, obviously, it is on. I mean, this here is straight. But it's actually the conifers that sort of follow the boundary of my property line here. So as you can see, there's enough space for me to be able to comfortably walk up here and be able to mess in the filter box that's here. But obviously, eventually, we're going to have the DIY backy shower that's going to be here in the middle. So I've got more than enough space to be able to walk up and down around the outside. A lot of people on the previous video were asking me why I use tarpaulin as a pond liner. Uh, I haven't. So let me just showcase you what I've actually done. I've actually screwed the um, pond liner itself down uh, with deck screws and also a washer around the top. So it isn't actually um, tarpaulin, guys, do not worry. Uh, to screw the net down as a temporary solution, like I keep saying, this is only temporary. Like I say, this isn't my final build by any stretch of the imagination. I've just got a screw in there and then it's hooked on. And then it's just a matter of obviously when the water gets on there, just pulling it up. As you can see now. And then just literally pulling the net back a little bit, but it's just very difficult to do one-handed. And then the net does sit off the water. Um, but yeah, that's sort of where we're up to. Where we're at. Where we're at to. Where we're up to at the moment. It is purely and simply just down to the fact that it's cold. It is freezing. It is raining, and we don't have the best of weather in the UK. But rest assured, guys. Come Jan, end of Jan slash early Feb, we're going to be back out here, grinding it away, getting this done. I am actually on the lookout uh, for some of the big blue rainwater drums as well. If you guys see any of those on Facebook Marketplace or anywhere near you, and you're in the UK, message me, I will happily drive down to collect them. Ideally free if possible, you know what I mean? Um, but failing that, anything up to sort of 20, 25 quid for the big blue ones, I need an additional two. Uh, I already have one. Um, I am actually going to start the bog filter build in the fish room downstairs as well. But there's so much content coming out, guys, over the next couple of weeks, all to do with Koi. Uh, like I say, if you follow me on my live stream on a Friday, I mentioned that I was actually going down to collect some Koi, which I have done now. They are rather sick, uh, so I do need to treat them. Uh, I've got the meds turning up today, so I'm actually going to be recording that video tonight. Ben's actually coming up to give me a helping hand with that. And we've also got the bowling up videos to do as well on the coil that I'm currently weathering in indoors for Ben uh, over the winter and getting those guys to sort of pack on some size. And don't forget the big facility updates coming. I'm back down there on Sunday. I'm going to be doing a video on it for you guys. It's going to be absolutely amazing. Over the next couple of months, it's koi, koi, koi. And obviously, don't forget, we've still got the marine builds. We've still got the aquarium builds coming up. We've still got the big seven-foot um, balding reef, a community tank that we're going to be doing. And that's where you guys are going to be picking what goes in the tank, how we scape it, what the filtration is going to be like, etc, etc. Make sure you're subbed along or else you're not going to have your vote included in that. And make sure, obviously, you are joining the Friday Night Lives. But as ever, follow me on social for more behind the scenes sneak peeks. Facebook and Twitter is at the Balding Reefer. Insta is slightly different, popping up just down there now. That's at the dot balding dot reefer. But as ever, stay safe, stay sane, but most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, stay happy. Balding Reefer, out.